Andrew, lovely to meet you, Fiona. You too. Uh, one of those days where I really felt on form. Indeed. Great to have your company. See you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight, the new normal. South Australia goes it alone as restrictions ease. The showdown goes on. The Crows and Power set for an Adelaide Oval clash. Vile act. A woman accused of spitting on a nurse walking to work. Lightning sparks ablaze, destroying precious memories for a Barossa Valley family. Welcome back. Maya prepares to reopen at Marion as retailers struggle. Also, a whale rescuer facing a hefty fine finds supporters around the world. And our flashback segment revisits a very different era, Adelaide's Beach Girl Quests. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Jane Doyle. Good evening. South Australians will be able to enjoy a drink and dine in at cafes and restaurants from Friday as strict COVID rules are eased earlier than expected. And we can head to the pub on the June long weekend, but eating out could cost a pretty penny. There's been little pleasure, but plenty of pain, even agony, and still not everyone's happy. By Friday, all cafes and restaurants can open, but only for a maximum of 20 people. Uh, it will be 10 indoors, 10 outdoors, uh, including alcohol service for all cafes and restaurants. Return to much more normal service being table service rather than takeaways predominantly. East End Cellars is a good barometer, usually a hive of activity. As we arrived today, staff members were being briefed. They'll only be serving a fraction of the customers they're used to. And you'll require a healthy credit card during these tough COVID times. Food and wine are 150 bucks a person to make it worthwhile. That'll pay for the kitchen, pay for clearing the plates, uh, pay for the food, of course, and the booze. The Premier today formalised the news we revealed exclusively last night. The upcoming long weekend's now open for pub trade. Step two of restrictions, which also includes cinemas, theatres, gyms and the like, has been accelerated by three days to Friday, June 5th. That allows hotels to cash in on the public holiday trade. We've pushed that economic barrow for more than a week. Today, a breakthrough. It did make sense um, that there is a long weekend to take the opportunity to um, open three days um, earlier. But it's still a work in progress. Larger hotels want the proposed 20 maximum increase to 50 patrons spread around the venue. The smaller the number, the less likely the bigger ones can open. Uh, and that's the problem with one size fits all. The long road doesn't allow for state border restrictions to follow the same journey. The Premier's standing firm despite the Prime Minister joining calls to open up. There's pressure coming uh, left, right and centre, but we're making our own decisions in South Australia. That's still a long way off, but as we've already seen, it's an ever-changing landscape. Mike Smithson, 7 News. A blockbuster showdown will headline footy's resumption here in South Australia. Theodoropoulos joins us and both clubs are preparing for the round two marquee matchup. They are, Jane. It's a massive boost for the state and the clubs with their first clash of the resumed 2020 season to be a showdown at Adelaide Oval. Now with both the Crows and Power in Adelaide for the next three weeks and potential health hurdles the AFL faces, it does make perfect sense to lock away one of the remaining 144 games. Premier Stephen Marshall called on the league to schedule the high profile fixture which would absolutely draw an enormous TV audience. Uh, it's not just the players, but uh, there's physios, there's doctors, there's support staff who would all have to go and relocate uh, for another week. And many of those have work in other uh, areas, uh, many of them in the, in the healthcare sector. So we're keen to support that if it works out for the AFL. What this also does is give the Crows and Power an extra week in Adelaide before heading to the Gold Coast. Also, the benefit for Premier Stephen Marshall and his committee too is another week to examine border restrictions and quarantine rules, meaning if they relax, the Crows and Power could avoid the Gold Coast hub altogether. All that's left for the AFL to do now is to give the green light to the showdown when it releases its fixture early next week. Jane. Thanks, Theo. A spitting attack on a nurse as she walked to work along Hindley Street has been slammed by authorities as abhorrent. Witnesses heard the victim's screams as she was targeted by another woman in broad daylight. 
Wearing her nursing scrubs, there was no mistaking the victim's profession. But as she walked to work along Hindley Street at 7.30 yesterday morning, she became a target. Police allege 42-year-old Charlotte Newton spat her drink on her. This is an absolute disgraceful act. Uh, we are absolutely appalled. Nearby workers heard the drama unfolding. It was just screaming and like someone trying to defy with someone else. Both my mum and my sister are nurses, so um, really hits close to home. A short time later, police arrested Newton on nearby Bank Street. She's also accused of spitting at an officer. We are resolute in taking action against any incidents where emergency services workers, including health workers, are assaulted in this way. Especially on this time of the year, let's say, the nurses are helping us with the virus and everything, so it's horrible. Penalties for assaulting emergency workers were beefed up last year when it became a specific crime. The basic offence can land an offender up to five years behind bars, but they could face 15 years for intentionally causing harm. They deserve to be safe at work and on their way to and from work. Newton didn't apply for bail and will face court again next month. Her alleged victim isn't the first emergency worker to be targeted during the pandemic. Since it began, three police officers have also been deliberately coughed on. Andrea Nicholas, 7 News. The manager of a western suburbs massage parlour and three of her workers have been arrested, accused of breaching COVID-19 restrictions. Deanna Williams joins us and Dee, the business was raided after a tip-off from neighbours. Yes, it was, Jane. Police swooped on this Croydon Park property late yesterday. They arrested three women aged 42, 45 and 50 who they allege were working as massage therapists in breach of the state's non-essential business ban. A 69-year-old woman was also arrested. Seven News understands she runs the business and was previously fined for breaching restrictions last month. A short time ago, a woman came to the door telling us the parlour is no longer operating. No, finish. No more. We call government charge. Oh, uh, one thousand. That's actually good. Why? It's safer for the neighbourhood. It's very funny because yeah, they've been doing a lot of business in there. All four women were bailed. They will appear in the Port Adelaide court in July. Jane. Thanks, Dee. A northern suburbs man's been charged over yesterday's fatal smash at Paringa in the Riverland. The 20-year-old was behind the wheel of a Toyota Yaris which rolled on the Sturt Highway, killing a 24-year-old male passenger. The driver from Daverin Park was charged with causing death by dangerous driving. He and a second passenger escaped with minor injuries. A Barossa family is picking up the pieces after a bolt of lightning sparked a blaze that's destroyed their home of 50 years. A wedding album and treasured cutlery set were all that could be salvaged from the ruins and they say it's not the first time it's happened. The act of nature that's left a home in ruins. Lachlan and his mother were cooking dinner when, all of a sudden, a bolt of lightning hit a solar panel on the roof. Seconds later, they smelt smoke. Scary when it hit, a loud bang when it hit, hit down low. I got a phone call at the time from my wife to say that there'd just been a heavy clap of thunder over the house uh, and a real loud bang with it at the same time. The 50-year-old stone house near Angerston was quickly engulfed in flames with its roof caving in. Extremely dangerous, the temperatures in there would have exceeded 800 degrees. I had an orphan lamb at the back of the house, I quickly grabbed that to get that away from the smoke, uh, but there was little else I could do. Two Kelpie dogs were also saved, but Sammy the cat is still missing. Incredibly, in the ruins, Mark found a treasured cutlery set and his wedding photos. Well, I rang a hold of that I found this here, so that would have been a relief. The CFS says it's not unusual for rural properties to be struck by lightning, and there's not a lot that farmers can do about it. It's a potluck as to whether the fire starts and gets going or if it doesn't. And some proof lightning can strike in the same place twice. Mark says his house has been hit before. About 30 years ago, I went through three answering machines uh, in severe thunder weather too at the same time. Fortunately, he's insured. Peter Caldicott, 7 News. 
An award-winning Australian cameraman who shot Hollywood blockbusters has been jailed for 13 and a half years for grooming teenaged girls. Nathan Tomlinson used alcohol to coax two girls to hotels in Sydney and on the Gold Coast for sex. Police also found child exploitation material on his computer. Tomlinson worked alongside directors James Cameron and Steven Spielberg. With parole, he could be freed in eight years. A MasterChef star has denied allegations he sexually assaulted a teenaged girl in Melbourne. Ben Ungerman mysteriously left the show without explanation, but it's since been revealed he's facing charges over the alleged attack in February. His lawyer says the 33-year-old will defend the charges when he faces court next month. A cash boost for new home buyers. Axing stamp duty and an immigration push are all being proposed to resuscitate our ha ailing housing market. The suggestions come amid dire new warnings about the impact of coronavirus on housing construction. In the face of a sudden dramatic slump in home building, the industry wants a backyard blitz like never before. 900,000 people work in construction directly. If this sector winds down, that's bad for everybody. Included in the Property Council's plan, buyers of newly built homes would get $50,000 from the federal government. State stamp duty taxes would be axed. The GST widened to include fresh food, health and education, making up lost revenue and a Welcome to Australia immigration campaign to drive growth. The industry predicts another 400,000 jobs could go by year's end, adding to the 100,000 already lost. It's very important. We're in a very, very critical stage right now. Taxes and charges currently account for up to 50% of a new home's cost. New home sales have fallen by 23% since the lockdown began. On top of that, nearly one third of current projects have been cancelled. The lead time for this type of construction is typically six to nine months, which means home builders will likely face a harder and longer climb back. Many of the projects have been approved, ready to start. Some of them have had issues with the bank getting their approval to start construction. Others have lost their jobs. The federal government says it's supporting the sector through JobKeeper and wage subsidies and is monitoring developments. Brian Seymour, 7 News. As coronavirus restrictions continue to ease, a big retailer is set to reopen its doors. Live now to Elise Baker at Marion and Elise Meyer will welcome back customers on Friday. That's right, Jane, but there'll be a few changes. Some services won't be on offer, including beauty appointments, bra, suit and shoe fittings. There'll be hand sanitizer stations, sneeze guards, and staff will monitor the number of customers allowed inside. The decision comes as Australian retailers suffer their biggest ever slump. April figures plunged by 17.9%, a staggering loss of $5.4 billion. However, online sales grew by 10%. Witchery has also confirmed it's reopening all stores tomorrow and Trenary will do the same on Friday. Country Road has indicated on social media it'll be opening on Friday too. Retailers are certainly hoping customers will have the confidence to come back and shop at their brick and mortar stores. Jane. Thanks Elise. America has praised Australia for leading the charge in establishing an inquiry into COVID-19 just hours after China ridiculed our role. It came as our health minister declared it's time to celebrate with fewer Australians at risk of contracting the virus. Just weeks ago ventilators were in critically short supply. Now an abundance. They're caused for celebration. Seven and a half thousand in our hospitals and just seven Australian patients needing them. It's a cause to recognise that uh, fewer and fewer Australians are at risk. As China warns Australia has no cause to celebrate its role in securing global agreement on a coronavirus inquiry. The final resolution is entirely different from what Australia called an independent international review. After China's ambassador Chong Jingyi labelled Australia's claimed victory a joke, US ambassador Arthur Culverhouse weighed in commending the government's role. When Australia speaks, the world listens. The Chinese government linked Global Times saying, listen to this, labelling Australia a giant kangaroo that acts as the dog of the US. With storm clouds gathering on trade, tomorrow the government will release its technology roadmap aimed at producing cheaper energy to revive our domestic manufacturing base and ease our reliance on Chinese trade. 
I do sense a groundswell of community support for Australian made products. Encouraging investment in gas as a low cost transitional fuel and hydrogen as a future source of the cheap electricity needed to put the Australian back in Australian made. Mark Riley, 7 News. Hydroxychloroquine is one of the most contentious drugs on the planet at the moment. Donald Trump is taking it, and now more than a thousand healthcare workers will too, to test if it can play a role in preventing COVID-19. It's not a vaccine, but could help stop the virus spreading. Hydroxychloroquine is already used to treat lupus, arthritis and malaria. More than 2,000 healthcare workers will be recruited for a nationwide trial. They'll take two tablets a day for four months. Half will take hydroxychloroquine, the other half a placebo. We do not know whether the patient's getting or the healthcare worker is getting the active drug or the placebo drug. And neither do they. It made headlines this week after Donald Trump announced he's taking it. If it doesn't, you're not going to get sick or die. But there are concerns about dangerous side effects. We wouldn't give it to people who have got uh, significant heart disease or heart rhythm abnormalities, abnormal heartbeats. If the trial is successful, the drug will only be given to frontline workers like aged care staff and police to protect them until a vaccine is found. The laboratory tests show that hydroxychloroquine um, works in a test tube. We really don't know whether it's going to work in people. The answer to that could take up to eight months. Louisa Cheatley, 7 News. An enterprising boatie who freed a whale from shark nets on the Gold Coast could receive more than one fine from the Department of Fisheries. But his actions have garnered widespread support. Looking and sounding like a Bond movie, a quick-thinking boatie races to untangle a young whale from shark nets at Burley. Documentary makers capturing the lengths he went to celebrating as the whale swims free. But they're a waste of time. I've dived my whole life and sharks are just swimming around them. But today SeaWorld labelled his actions as extremely dangerous and said they should only be undertaken by those with appropriate training and skills. The earliest entanglement uh, in the last 60 years. Django could face a maximum penalty of $22,000 for coming within 100 metres of a whale. There's also a further fine if you touch the animal. Lawyers are confident he has a defence. Where you see an animal in distress and possibly drowning, one might argue that that was a reasonable excuse. A GoFundMe page has raised more than $10,000. The community is behind this 100%. But surfers and beachgoers are divided over whether nets are necessary. It gives the kids a bit of a feeling of safety. They seem to be more hazardous than anything. According to conservationists, it's around one third of species caught in nets across Queensland aren't sharks. And every year, up to 10 whales are caught. The majority of those here on the Gold Coast. Those nets are just a fishing device and they are indiscriminate killers. A problem with no clear solution. Isabel Mullen, 7 News. Still to come, our 7 News flashback. And tonight, we're hitting the sand to remember the days of Adelaide's beach girl quests. There are lots of finalists, and all of them with figures to make even an auditor happy. But judges narrow the field down to 13 as the grand final gets underway. Miss Beach Girl 1974, Jane Riley, will join us for a look back at a very different era a bit later on Flashback. Hmm. Now mm -hmm. let's check in with Soda on what's coming up in sport. Well, Jane, as you saw earlier, a showdown to reboot yes. the season looks like it could well be on the cards. And if the Crows or Port are good enough by the end of the season in October to make the grand final, there's every chance they could be playing under lights. And she should have been warming up for New York in the WNBA ahead of another Olympic campaign in Tokyo. Instead, Steph Talbot is making the most of being home here in SA ahead of... The, uh, the start of the basketball season here as well. And having to practice outside by the looks hey, of it. Hey, yep. Thanks, Soda. Ahead on 7 News, wrong way driver. A car without lights leads police on a northern suburbs chase. Pulled from US shelves, but Johnson & Johnson baby talc still being sold here. Midnight mayhem. Homes torn to pieces as wild storms strike without warning. And arise Sir Tom, Britain's favourite fundraiser given another honour. 
7 News. Brought to you by Aussie. Home. It's not just a place we're stuck in. It's home cooked meals, home workouts, home schooling, working from home, home movie nights, and movie days. It's see you when I get home. Your home means more than ever, and so does having the right home loan. To understand your options, go straight to Aussie. We'll help ensure you have the right loan for right now. Oh my God. So I guess it's pretty obvious that I can't see. Music is my vision. A voice so beautiful, it'll touch the world. What you couldn't see was the whole of the Palladium on their feet. Just wait till you hear her sing. It was just brilliant. Oh, my heart is just melting. It's a night full of surprises. That one was close. New Britain's Got Talent, tonight, 7.30. Hyundai's end of financial year sale is on. Get great value across our eye-catching range. Like the Hyundai i30 hatch with the confidence of a seven-year warranty. And end of financial year bonuses on selected SUVs, including the Hyundai Tucson. And seven-seat petrol V6 Hyundai Santa Fe. Hyundai's end of financial year sale. See it to believe it. Illusion is on fire! A warm home is a safe home. Support Australia's largest manufacturer of gas log fires, Illusion. Buy direct and save thousands. Heat is starting at 2499. Don't be left out on the cold. 355 Main North Road, Enfield. Want to sell something for instant cash? We're open. Looking to buy from a huge range of quality second-hand goods for less? We're open. Cash converters. Find us online or visit us in store. Feel Good Massage Chairs take your health and safety seriously. Massive clearance sale now on. Chairs start from $19.99. Half price. Do you have backache, neckache, sore shoulders? Relax and enjoy a Feel Good Shouts Your Massage at home. 30 day money back guarantee, lifetime warranty, no contact delivery, plus a $400 pro massager for free to the first 30 buyers. Feel Good Massage Chairs, sale ends 22nd of May. The stylish Havel H2, a globally engineered, European designed and feature packed SUV. From just $22,990 drive away, Havel H2 Auto, new car thinking. Advocate protects against more parasites than any other treatment. So your pet is free to dream. Advocate, so everyone can rest easy. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Seven News has spoken with a couple who allegedly led police on a dangerous pursuit through the northern suburbs. It's claimed the pair drove on the wrong side of the road without lights, but the driver and passenger say things escalated after they were unfairly targeted. Security vision captured the chase as the Ford Laser sped through the northern suburbs. Patrol cars hot on its heels. I was in my car for like not even 10 seconds down the road and they started chasing us for no reason. Aaron Sinclair was behind the wheel, his partner Jasmine in the passenger seat. It's alleged the pursuit began when Aaron failed to pull over around 3.30 this morning. I just didn't want to stop because my heart was racing because I was too scared. But didn't know what they were going to do to me. Patrols lost sight of the car at Blakeview. Moments later, it was spotted again on Main North Road. Road spikes were placed along Yorktown Road, but despite two punctured tyres, Aaron kept driving. There was a potential there to, um, to harm somebody or something or run over a child or whatever. The 20-minute chase eventually came to a halt at Elizabeth North. I jumped out willingly to lay it on the ground for them and... They yeah, just handcuffed me like, real hard. Aaron was unlicensed and the car unregistered. Meanwhile, his partner was reported for carrying a weapon. No, it was my base of that which I use for protection because of my mental health. Aaron's been charged with a raft of offences and will face the Elizabeth Magistrates Court next month. I'll, I reckon I'll just get a slap on the wrist. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. 
The National Disability Royal Commission says it's appalled by the disgusting circumstances surrounding the death of Anne-Marie Smith. She was under the care of a worker funded by the NDIS. The Commission says it's monitoring the multiple inquiries into the tragic case, including the major crime investigation. Johnson & Johnson will stop selling its talc-based baby powder in the US and Canada, saying more than a 1,000 lawsuits alleging cancer risks, plus the coronavirus pandemic, have made the product no longer commercially viable. The baby powder will continue to be sold elsewhere, including Australia. Lawsuits allege the company's talc products have been contaminated with asbestos. Johnson & Johnson stands by the safety of its product. For the first time since the Titanic sank 108 years ago, salvage teams have won permission to cut into the wreckage. A US judge ruled teams can go in to retrieve the Marconi radio, which the doomed ship used to call a nearby vessel for help. It requires them to remove a small part of the ship to reach the room where it lies. There's been huge opposition to the move, with some suggesting the Titanic should be preserved as a grave. The judge says it's a unique opportunity to contribute to the ship's legacy. And he's gone from captain to colonel. Now Britain's favourite fundraiser will become Sir Tom Moore. The World War II veteran will be knighted after a special nomination from Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who said he provided the country with a beacon of light through the fog of coronavirus. Colonel Moore raised more than $60 million doing laps of his garden in the lead up to his 100th birthday. A major cleanup's underway after a massive storm tore through Geelong. Just after midnight, it ripped into 60 homes. The damage is extraordinary. What looks like an explosion was instead a natural event. Short and brutal, homes torn apart when it hit at 11 past one this morning. Gusts so powerful, roofs were launched into the air. Bins left on rooftops, trampolines whisked away. As home security cameras show, it lit up the sky. Just amazing, the noise. It was just so loud, just like a jet engine on top. And um, the roar was deafening. What Simon Aitken thought was a jet was in fact his garage being torn apart. Half of it landing in the backyard on the kids' cubby house. Everything outside the main structure is, yeah, being total. Erin Gear's home was the worst hit. A shard of glass lodged in her arm, another in a door frame. Up to 60 houses were damaged, four are uninhabitable. The Weather Bureau can't pinpoint what happened. With severe storms, you can get tornadoes. You can also get what, what are known as downbursts or microbursts. Experts are examining the path of destruction to determine what it was. I've got a shed in my backyard next door. The neighbour said I can have it. <laughs> the damage is remarkable. So too, you'd have to say, is the timing. This happened when most of us were asleep, which is lucky when you think about parts of the street that would have been flying around. Tiles became projectiles. This one piercing a windscreen, ending up on the passenger seat. We're thankful we're alive and, you know, we thank God that we are alive. Blake Johnson, 7 News. Back home and after storms and hail hit here last night, a second front settling in. Amelia joins us now and it's wild by the coast tonight, Milsey. <laughs> Jane, it is. We've got strong winds battering us here at Brighton where we've been at the local surf club watching conditions intensify this afternoon. We've seen strong winds batter the coast late today. Only people out and about were a handful of surfers. Showers rolled through the city just before 5pm and we've got a wet night ahead with another hit of hail possible as well. Now this system's looking a little more promising in terms of rainfall. Already Kate Willoughby and Parowa have both collected around 20 millimetres. Mount Gambia's had 17 and here in the city we've had just over seven. Now aside from the showers we've also got some pretty chilly conditions settling in. We'll have details on tomorrow's forecast a little later. Jane. Don't get blown away in the meantime. Thanks Amelia. Still to come on 7 News. Owners in limbo. Why a truck that destroyed their holiday home is staying put. New laws proposed following the death of a woman who fell for an online catfish. The quest for a cure, why scientists fear we may never be coronavirus free. And holiday plans on hold for a mystery millionaire who scooped the Oz Lotto pool. David, I'm signing you to the Home Secretary. Very good, Mum. Pleasure to meet you, Mum. I'm late for a meeting. 
She's got an agenda to heighten fear and to seize power. I don't need you to vote for me. I need to protect me. These plots do not always arise from outside. She's got you wrapped around her finger. This is a very dangerous politician. He's been an inside man all along. Looks like the Home Secretary couldn't be in safer hands. The Must See Event Bodyguard, tonight on 7. Hi everyone, Luke Mangan here. And from my kitchen to yours, we hope you're enjoying this week's Healthy Eating Challenge. My Heart Healthy Dish from the Heart Foundation and Coles Cook With Heart Challenge is Chicken Parmigiana. This heart healthy recipe is really simple to prepare. It takes about 10 minutes preparation and about 30 minutes to cook. And it is delicious. All right, I'm gonna get some chicken breasts and we're just gonna cut these into about four pieces. Got a pan nice and hot. Now we're just gonna sear this chicken off. About three to four minutes on each side. Gonna set them aside on a plate, cover them with tin foil and let them rest. All right, so we just need one onion chopped or diced. One garlic clove, we're gonna crush that, and then, you know, crushed or chopped. Finely dice this eggplant. I just love fresh tomatoes, and these are beautiful vine-ripened ones, and they're just gonna add some beautiful flavor. Just very roughly chopped tomatoes. When using uh, fresh herbs, especially basil, I don't even mind if there's some stalk in there. Lots of flavor. About a cup of basil. So as this is a really heart-friendly dish, substitute fresh herbs, dried herbs and spices instead of using salt. And it smells absolutely beautiful. So we need about three cups of spinach leaves and 310 grams of roasted pepper strips. Just drain them off. Right. So same pan that we've cooked the chicken in. We're just gonna add the onions, garlic, the eggplant. And now we just add those peppers. It's gonna be a beautiful sauce. So that's now been cooking for about three to four minutes. I'm just gonna add the fresh tomato and the tin tomato. So we're gonna cook this one out for about four or five minutes until it thickens up. I'm gonna add the spinach leaves and the basil, and that'll just wilt down. Then what I do, I put those little chicken cuts in a baking dish. I top that with all this beautiful heart healthy goodness and just spread that out. So we need half a cup of reduced fat mozzarella cheese. And then of course, some breadcrumbs just to finish it off. And then I'll put that into an oven about 200 degrees. That's been in the oven for about 20 minutes and it looks great. I just wanna finish that with a few green beans that I've just cooked in some water. And there you have my amazing heart healthy chicken parmigiana. The driver of a runaway truck that ploughed into a home at Karakalinga yesterday has told Seven News it was an out-of-body experience. The vehicle was supposed to be removed today, but insurance issues meant the towing company refused to do the job. The property's heartbroken owners are anxiously waiting to see what can be salvaged from the wreckage. New laws to stop relationship catfishing have been recommended at the coronial inquest into a young woman's death. Her best friend and former lover tricked her by opening a fake online account. A fake online lover has left Renee Marsden's family with a heartbreaking reality and a perpetrator who's like, never been happened? charged. Look, let me go on record as this. Pure evil would be about the best way to describe her. 20-year-old Renee took her own life in 2013 after her boyfriend of two years ended their relationship. But Brayden Spratieri wasn't real. He was a fictional character created by her best friend and former obsessed girlfriend, Camilla Zidon. Under New South Wales law, creating a fake online persona or catfishing isn't illegal. So for seven years, Renee's family has been calling for major law reform. And it's just a shame that uh, she wasn't uh, locked up over it. Handing down her findings, Deputy State Coroner Elaine Truscott today gave them some hope, recommending an in-depth review into domestic and personal violence laws. If it becomes Renee's law, that'd be fantastic. Camilla Zidon refused to attend the inquest today, further infuriating Renee's family. The court heard Zidon's evidence was completely made up and she's never made any attempt to give Renee's loved ones the answers they're desperately seeking. She hasn't gone in vain and I'll make sure of that. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. 
As the focus of governments around the world shift to economic recovery, scientists are still striving to unravel mysteries about COVID-19. One British expert claims the unique virus is so successful at spreading, it may never be eradicated. Even as restrictions ease, our social behaviour remains under the microscope by scientists studying the impact it'll have on a virus they say is so transmissible it's almost uncontrollable. We have to be clear that we're not going to be able to eradicate this virus. You know, it's going to settle into the human population and in so several years it will become a normal virus. So if anything, we're accommodating to it. The virtual House of Lords committee meeting also heard there's no evidence to support a conspiracy theory backed by President Donald Trump about the virus being made in a Wuhan lab. I don't think we're not clever enough to have designed this virus. It's, it's, it's far too unique. Not as deadly as some, but described as deceitful due to the number of infected people who are asymptomatic. The World Health Organization believes in the hardest hit countries around 20 percent of the population has coronavirus antibodies, far less in other places, meaning the majority of people remain susceptible to catching the virus. Whether infection leads to long-term immunity, uh, we actually don't know that yet, or immunity or how long it, immunity might last. Dismissing claims that megadoses of vitamin D can protect against it. In London, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. A mystery millionaire has woken up with $17 million in his bank account after winning Auslotto's Division I draw. He told officials he felt blessed by the prize, but coronavirus restrictions mean a holiday is out of the question. That's obviously in the future a little bit more. It's all been about the home, home renovations, home relocation, and certainly all about the family. The winning ticket was bought at a Sydney news agency. Still to come on 7 News, we travel back to a very different era, remembering Adelaide's beach girls. Later, the industry's hiring and paying well as unemployment figures rise. And wild dolphins missing human interaction offer up gifts from the ocean. For your official local source of COVID-19 information and the range of support services available, go to sa.gov.au. He's visiting, but now he's found a reason to stay. You always flirt with your brother's dates. You want me. Oh, yeah, more than you'll ever know. But let's be honest, you'll never know. I'll leave you alone. Just say the word. Home and away, this week at 7 on 7. The streets are calling. Make sure you're ready to answer. The BMW 118i from 49900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. From the fields up north to the oceans west, we comb the land for the food that's best. Taste buds to tickle a whole steak to feed. Homegrown goodness, that's what we need. Every day low prices, any time of year. Trust the mighty South Aussie. With more of your favourite South Aussie brands, great food lives at Foodland. Foodland. Right now, with Freedom by Metricon, you can get more home for less with this spacious four-bedroom, two-living room and two-bathroom family home for just $169,900. That's more from Metricon. The BHP Vital Resources Fund is supporting community organisations providing essential community services during the coronavirus challenge. For more information, visit bhp.com slash vital resources. Eggs. They're a great source of vitamin D. An average serve provides 82% of your recommended intake. Vitamin D supports your immunity. So get cracking, Australia. From May 11, COVID-19 restrictions are being eased on regional travel and some outdoor activities and public gatherings across the state. Current social distancing advice still applies. Visit sa.gov.au today. Keeping SA safe and strong. The Beacon Frenzy Sale is now on with 20% off all lights and fans. Update your home this winter and get 20% off every single light and fan this week only. Hurry, the Beacon Frenzy Sale ends Sunday. 
HelloFresh. Delicious meals delivered to your door with pre-portioned fresh ingredients. Now you can focus on what's really important. Order your box today. HelloFresh. Inspiration delivered. Owls is a world on demand. So why should the way we study be any different? UniSA Online. Apply now. Time for flashback now and tonight we're off to the beach and a more innocent time when it was considered quite acceptable to judge a woman on her beauty, figure and diction. Adelaide holds a quest for Miss Beach Girl of 1955 with a bevy of lovelies all trying to catch the judge's eyes. Language and imagery from a bygone era of poise, deportment and charm. Beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. Heats were held right along the coast of uh, Adelaide beaches. So one week it would be like here at Glenelg, West Beach, Somerton, Semaphore, right along the coast. Somewhere beyond the sea. Jane Riley first came to prominence after winning the Beach Girl Quest in 1974. In, well, not much. I don't think we even had sunscreen on. I think we might have had a bit of baby oil. It opened up all sorts of doors and led to a stellar media career. It was harmless and uh, good fun. Summer down the beach, you know, lots of girls in bikinis that looked uh, seriously big compared to the bikinis today. Mike Drewer hosted the quest in the early 70s. I had to introduce them and then, of course, interview them. And those uh, typical questions, you know, what are your hobbies? You know, and you get lots of horseback riding or I want to be a model or uh, various things like that. There are lots of finalists and all of them with figures to make even an auditor happy. But judges narrow the field down to 13 as the grand final gets underway. The very, very first Beach Girl Quest in South Australia was in 1954, one year before I was born. And the costumes were a lot more solid than what I wore the day that I won the Beach Girl Quest. The competitions always attracted thousands of spectators. It wasn't considered to be sexist or grubby or anything else like that. There was a sense of women's liberation. We were proud of our bodies. I think we were having a lot more fun than what people are having these days because we weren't kind of self-conscious about our bodies. And believe it or not, number 13 is the lucky girl. 17 years old, June Bozisto, a dental nurse from Gawler. She wins 250 pounds, which is a nice figure for a nice figure. A figure even an auditor would be proud of. That's a line. Well, with unemployment soaring towards the highest rate in almost three decades, the competition for jobs is tougher than ever. But some industries are hiring and paying well. We'll tell you where to find them. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. Friendly dolphins that usually mingle with tourists at Tin Can Bay in Queensland are missing their daily interactions so much they've been offering gifts from the sea. Among the treasures they've collected are sea sponges, barnacle encrusted bottles and pieces of coral. While volunteers monitor the pod, restrictions mean it's been weeks since visitors have fed the animals at Barnacle's Cafe. Scores of people are promising via social media to visit as soon as they can. Remarkable. Mm. Time for sport now, and the round two showdown might just go ahead at Adelaide Oval. Fingers well, crossed. Yeah, Jane, a lot's changed in the last sort of 24, 48 hours, haven't they, mm. with restrictions? Just, uh, well, I suppose, uh, just lessened a little bit here, allowing the clubs to stay a little bit longer. Could we get a showdown here? It'd be terrific. Also coming up, Port Star Robbie Gray suffers a painful setback in his return to training. Could 2020 be the year that the AFL Grand Final is played under lights? And the world's premier fast bowler excited by the prospect of a huge back half of the year. Getting my house renovated is like a golden ticket <laughs> to the rest of your life. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Right. Oh. It'll be the Hampton style home of her dreams. This is a house of her dreams. Oh my God. God's dream home will be revealed. House Rules, Sunday at 7. With Toyota Warranty Advantage covering you for at least five years, still feeling it, Mick. Toyota value stays with you. Like Pluger two-wheel drive GX Auto. Drive away from 41,990. Older feeling. Toyota. Go on.
At Devondale, we believe great milk comes from cows that graze free. A lot of us are spending more time at home, Ow. using a lot more electricity and internet. Unfortunately, mm. I select can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation. But we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. You don't give in. You don't give up. You push on when most would have pushed off. You lend a hand, whether a hand was asked for or not. It's called Aussie Spirit for good reason. Because it takes spirit to get through times like these. Lucky you've got it in spades. It's what inspires us to be by your side to help. Together we'll get through this. We always do. Search Toyota here to help. Recent bushfires and COVID-19 have fundamentally changed our economic landscape. To help our small business owners navigate this new reality, the South Australian Government has created the SA Small Business Hub with information on applying for grants and funding, plus advice on a range of topics including cyber security, applying for government tenders and access to all the support you need to get back to business sooner. Visit the SA Small Business Hub at business.sa.gov.au. This sports report brought to you by the South Australian Small Business Hub. Hello again. Well, footy's restart hasn't gone to plan for Port Adelaide superstar Robbie Gray with a 32-year-old breaking his toe at training. But the club says the gun forward will be fit for the club's round two clash, which could well be a blockbuster Adelaide Oval showdown. Gray's barely sighted on track at the best of times, but now he has an excuse. CEO Keith Thomas saw the funny side in the superstar forward's misfortune. So Robbie Gray, who's not a great guy in the gym, um, he's... Uh, <laughs> He's, he's apparently dropped a weight on his foot. How do you drop a weight on, on your toe, you know, like, to be honest? Anyway, he's a professional. Despite the setback, Thomas expects his live wire to be fit and firing come the Powers' second game of 2020, which is likely to be a blockbuster Adelaide Oval showdown after the government's relaxing of training restrictions. Look, instinctively, I think that round two makes sense for us. It was a bit of a surprise um, that uh, the, uh, the exemption came. We were confident uh, that uh, the South Australian government understood what we were trying to achieve. In its highly anticipated 150th year, Port Adelaide is keen to pay tribute to its rich history by wearing its traditional prison bars jumper. But like the club did with its captain, the decision will be put to the members. I see it as a celebration of our heritage that needs to be shared with our fans. Um, that would be my preference, in which case we would seek to do it when, when our fans are back. But I reckon we'll go out to our members and find out, find out what, the, what they would prefer. Theodoropoulos, 7 News. Well, momentum for a night grand final is building. While the immediate focus is getting the season underway, there's a lot of support to work in the timing of the Premiership decided with the Cox Plate. Collingwood President Eddie Maguire set tongues wagging today. I think we'll have a night grand final this year. I think we'll have the holiday on the Friday and then we'll have Saturday will be the Cox Plate and Saturday night will be the grand final. I don't really care, to be honest. Um, as long as I'd love us to be in it. <laughs> I don't care when it's played, as long as we're there, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Cricket and he's, well, bowled more overs than any other player over the past 12 months. And Aussie quick Pat Cummins has welcomed the extended break from the grain. His career was all but over, struck down by stress fractures in his back. It took him five years to play test cricket again after his debut in 2011. Now the body is strong and his past 12 months has been nothing short of brilliant. But there's unfinished business for Pat Cummins. You look at the, the real greats of the game and they played for 15, 20 years. They played and won countless you know, Ashes series, World Cups, 
big tournaments. So I still feel like I'm right at the start of my career and there's so much more to achieve. Cummins is the game's pin-up boy. He plays in all forms of the game and has been a huge part of Australia becoming the number one test and 2020 side in the world. Completely off guard because I didn't even know it was on the radar. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a great... It's a, another great acknowledgement to the team um, how far we've come in the last couple of years. He's confident the Test Series against India will proceed here next summer, even if it's played in empty stadiums. It's just over 12 months ago that India came over to Australia and beat us here, so that's, a, that's one that's really burning for me at the moment to, um, to play them again next summer or this summer and, um, and win that trophy. Jim Wilson, 7 News. Olympian Steph Talbot believes she'll be an even better player because of the disruption of the coronavirus and that's caused basketball some issues but Talbot and the Adelaide Lightning will return to modified training in just over two weeks. Steph Talbot was due to make her WNBA debut for the New York Liberty this week. Instead, with indoor courts still out of bounds, a light outdoor workout in Adelaide has to suffice. It's definitely been a challenge trying to keep yourself motivated, keep fit in different ways. Um, it's been very interesting. Coming off her best WNBA season with Minnesota, Talbot should also be just 10 weeks out from her second Olympics in Tokyo. It's Talbot with the three and she hits a career high fifth three of the game. It was so close, you know, you were coming up to the final preparations and then now it's a whole nother year away. So I guess it's just back to training and getting ready for the WNBL season. Basketball Australia today announced new guidelines for WNBL, NBL and state leagues as a return to competition edges closer. And for players struggling financially, the Australian Basketball Players Association will provide support. The establishment of the $150,000 ABA hardship fund has meant that we can support our players who are, who are doing it tough during this time. John Casey, 7 News. Tottenham star Danny Rose says Premier League players are being treated like lab rats during the pandemic. Some players are hesitant to return to training after six people from three different clubs tested positive for COVID-19 in league-wide testing over the past two days. People are suggesting we should go back to football and just like we, basically like we're guinea pigs or lab rats. We don't want to rush anything, but I don't think it's, it's rushed. Officials are hopeful the league can resume safely next month. That's our look at sport, Jane, at night mm. AFL Grand Final. Been a lot of talk about it over the past couple of years mm. and it might just be convenient to sort of wedge it in now with the corona situation. Under the cover of corona. Absolutely. That'll be the excuse used, yeah? Mm. OK, thanks, Soda. To your money and the local share market managed to overcome its sluggish start, the ASX 200 closed the day 13 points higher. Among today's market movers, online retailer Kogan gained 52 cents, while BHP lost 33. The Aussie dollar is buying 65 US cents, 70 yen and 53 pence. Stay with us after the break. Short-term, high-paying positions in demand. We'll tell you who's hiring. And we've got a break from the wet weather tomorrow, but showers are set to return just in time for the weekend. All the details in the full forecast, live from Brighton, up next. Illusion is on fire. A warm home is a safe home. Support Australia's largest manufacturer of gas log fires, Illusion. Buy direct and save thousands. Heat is starting at 2499. Don't be left out on the cold. 355 Main North Road, Enfield. If you have sensitive skin, try Cetaphil from Chemist Warehouse. It gently cleanses, hydrates and protects and it's free from soap and fragrances. Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser 1 litre is $14.99. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse. When help is far from reach, when hope is lost in an instant, a familiar face finds you, experience reassures you, and innovation carries you. They're yours. They're Australia's Royal Flying Doctor Service. Harvey Norman has everything you need for your home. Come into our spacious stores for the best of Australian made. Choose Australian made timber and fabric beds and customise the fabric, colour and timber stain to suit your home. Our range features the best names in Australian made mattresses and ensembles. Sealy, Sleepmaker, Beautyrest, King Coil and Body Balance. 
Complete your sleep experience with beautiful Australian-made Manchester. Support local manufacturers and choose Australian-made. Everything you need for your home. Browse online and shop in store. Now at Harvey Norman. Go! Introducing Jumpstart by Light and Easy, the simple program that will help fast track your weight loss success and improve your health. Within those first couple of weeks, I noticed a difference within myself. I found results straight away, and for me, Light and Easy has been life changing. Jumpstart combines the proven weight loss results of intermittent eating with Light and Easy's delicious, nutritious meal plans. Whether your goal is to jumpstart your weight loss or to simply eat well and improve your health, visit lightandeasy.com.au today. That feels especially true, given what's going on. It is good to know that our super will help us and our economy bounce back. And if you're with one of these, your super is invested in things that create jobs and keep Aussie businesses strong, delivering good long-term returns that benefit all of us. After all, we're all in this together. The power's in your hands and at your feet. The BMW 320i sedan from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. He's visiting, but now he's found a reason to stay. Beautiful day. Yeah, that's Summer Bay for you. Do you always flirt with your brother's dates? You want me? Oh, yeah, more than you'll ever know. But let's be honest, you'll never know. Hana's using you to get back at me. This was a competition I've already won. I'll leave you alone. Just say the word. Home and away. This week at 7 on 7. This weather report brought to you by the BMW 3 Series. Get breaking news for Adelaide and South Australia on our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For news as it happens, join 7 News Adelaide on social media. With thousands stood down, many Australians are looking for ways to turn their existing skills into a regular income. It's seen a boom in workers around the globe offering their services online to clients in homes. Closed up inside, but open for business. A year ago, Max Wu traded the office for opportunity. A lot of clients, a lot of different projects, um, and you get to work with people all over the world. With more than 900,000 jobs lost in just seven weeks, many Aussie workers are now joining Max Online, offering hundreds of different skills on websites like freelancer.com. Number one, you've got people out of work looking for jobs. Number two, you've got businesses looking to find uh, cheaper and faster and uh, more efficient ways of doing things. In high demand right now, coding, YouTube services and video game development. But there's also some more traditional fields shifting to the web in huge numbers. Demand for online legal services has jumped 17.5%. It's a similar story with architecture consulting. Home design, even voiceover artists have seen a surge in popularity. This is a great global work online experiment. And while some of us will return to the same office and job, a survey by ING suggests more than 3 million Australians are already considering a career change and learning new skills to help prepare. Technical as well as personal. The combination of the, the data and the digital with the human connection and the empathy that we think will be the, the workforce of the future. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Time for more news on the weather now and we head back to Brighton and Amelia, you haven't blown away. How are those showers tracking tonight? <laughs> No, not yet, Jane. Look, it looks like the main band of showers has moved through the city, but we are still expecting a shower or two tonight. And as you can see here, winds are still pretty strong about the coast. So far, the West Terrace gauge has recorded almost eight millimetres. Right now in the city, it's 11 degrees. And despite a few patches of sunshine this morning, it was a cold day. Our top was 15.4. And we didn't have to travel far to get there either, following a low of 11.7 degrees. Now, statewide and top 
top temperatures stayed below 20. Mount Lofty stayed below 10 degrees. We've seen that main band of showers stretch from Air and York Peninsulas over KI and the southeast today. Now it's travelling with a cold front that cleared through Adelaide just after 5 p.m. Another front's due to clip the southeast on Friday, but it's not looking as strong. Interstate and tonight's showers will reach Melbourne soon. They're easing tomorrow morning, just 13th the forecast top there and in Hobart, while rain is set to develop over Sydney. Back home and it's looking fine but cold across our far north with clear skies likely to lead to frost patches about northern Air Peninsula, the Flinders and mid-north. 16 degrees is the forecast top for Port Augusta, Wyala and Kadena. Up to 17 in Port Lincoln and Sedona, just 12 in Clare, 13 in Uriotpa. Showers are still a chance about our central and eastern districts, which could see hail as well. It'll all contract to the coast during the day. 15 for Victor Harbour, 16 for Murray Bridge, 13 for Mount Gambia. Tonight, a warning's been reissued to sheep graziers in these districts. And on Metro Waters tomorrow, we've got south to south westerly winds to 20 knots, easing at night with seas to 2 metres. In the city, and we could still see an early shower, but for the most part, just a few clouds about tomorrow, 15's the top. Looking ahead, the wet weather looks set to return Friday, 15's the top. Then showers look set to continue into Saturday, clearing early next week, but get your washing done by Monday because the wet weather looks set to return again on Tuesday. So on and off, Jane, and it looks like this cold weather is here to stay. Certainly does. Thanks, Amelia. Well, that's all the news to now. I'll have updates through the evening, and the latest is at 11 o'clock. For now, from the news team, good night.